Hey guys, I'm Mythical Maniac, and welcome back to another video of the Ozmuna region. A region based on my home country, Australia, a little bit of Tasmania, and a little bit of New Zealand. In many Pokemon games, there is always the early regional bird, bug, mammal Pokemon, as well as the Pikachu clone. And just like those regions, Ozmuna also has these Pokemon. These Pokemon are important to any first Pokemon game, as it's most of the time the first Pokemon you meet on your journey, and they may impact your team as you play. So, without further ado, let's meet these more Osmunian Pokemon. Just a heads up, a lot of these fake mons I created a long time ago. Some of them I traced original artists to get different shapes, as I wasn't an artist at the time, and so I will be leaving anyone's artist uh, thing in the description. If I haven't, please let me know and I'll definitely add them. If not, I will completely redraw them and we'll see. First up, in the Osmuna region, we have the regional bird being Pykeling. Pykeling are smart baby bird Pokemon spending most of their time in their nests. However, if they aren't in their nest, they are in small groups of two to three other Pykeling. As they aren't strong, they can't carry heavy shiny objects, so they tend up to pick up food wrappings that are shiny. Pykeling is based on a baby magpie, a bird well known to any Australian, Many f mainly for their swooping ability, hence the category swooping Pokemon. Pykeling is inspired by also cartoons of baby birds and how they hop around, being just round balls. As well as many smaller birds hopping around, and of course, magpies. Pykeling's name actually comes from Pika, which is magpie in Latin, and Ling, which is bling, as in shiny objects. Pykeling evolves into Magling. Magling tend to collect a lot of shiny objects, anything they can carry such as coins and other small objects. They tend to be fond of these items and will not turn them. If they truly trust a trainer or Pokemon, they will give these shiny objects to them to look after for them. When in the wild, they will swoop Pokemon and trainers that enter their territory. Magling is also based on a magpie. These Pokemon are known for swooping as magpies do during the spring in Australia, which is, I believe, their breeding time. You don't want to be out near them. Magling is a sly Pokemon, being in a way a mob boss, which is why it's got that push back hair, or feathers in this case, as well as collecting shiny objects. The reason they give trainers shiny objects is because like some crows and ravens, if they trust someone, they do shiny trades where they give them gifts while they are given food. Magling's names come from Magpie and Bling. Magling evolves into Maggurum. Maggurum collect a lot of shiny objects, storing them in their feathers, and in some cases, wearing them. They give these items to trainers and Pokemon they truly trust, and even use these items for attacks. If anyone tries to take them, it will swoop them back. They've been seen fighting each other over certain objects, and will fight other bird Pokemon for them. The leader of a group of Magling and Pykeling will have the most shiny objects. Magurum, of course, are still based on magpies. They're also based on collectors, hence the collecting of shiny objects. As well, they're also based on those scammers and salespersons where they wear the trench coats with the watches where they're like, do you want to buy a watch? Again, they sort of have that minor based on a mob boss, hence the brushback feather as fur, as well as the jewelry and gold cufflinks on their feet. Magurum, like certain Pokemon, will actually have a signature move, this being Gold Drop. Not a great name, I know, it's just the thing I wanted to call it. But, this move is where Magurum flies over the opponent, dropping its collection of opposing on the opposing Pokemon. Like Roost and other moves like that, it actually loses its steel typing after this move is done, and it gets it by the next move. Magurum actually comes from the word Magpie, and Aurorum, which is the gold in Latin. But that was the regional bug. Pykeling, Magling, and Magurum. Next up is the regional bug. I love bug type Pokemon and I think this was quite a fun idea. So, this is Grabrugi. Grabrugi tend to spend most of their days hiding in logs and old dead trees, or even under the ground. If, they if they're found, they tend to try to use their tails that look like a mouth to scare predators. People who are bitten by these Pokemon are said to be hallucinating and see their tail biting and become an actual mouth. Grabrugi aren't based entirely on most bugs, it's more just the general grub. However, there is one animal, the Wichity Grub, an animal used as food from the First Nations of Australia, 
but their tail is also based on the effect of how butterflies and other bugs have markings that look like eyes and mouths to scare off predators. Grabuji's name comes from the name Grub and Witajuri, which I'm probably saying wrong and I apologize, which is the First Nation's name for Witchity Grub. Grabuji evolves into Grakoon. Grakoon shells are much stronger than most Cocoon Pokemon. These Pokemon, although Cocoons, are able to crawl and hang with their arms located on their front. In the dark, these markings on their back can glow with the moonlight reflecting off them, and look like eyes scaring travelers. Large groups of these Pokemon are seen in trees, like thousands of eyes staring back. Cocoon are based on, well, Cocoons. It's also got a little bit of inspiration of exoskeleton, like how Cicada and other bugs leave their exoskeletons on trees when they molt. Cocoon comes from the word grub and cocoon. Cocoon evolves into the moth. The moth is known for being a mysterious ghost bug type Pokemon. Their wings look like eyes and with their powers are able to make them glow. They can also release a powder that causes hallucinations to make it seem like the face is moving. They spend most of their time near dead logs to look after their baby Grabuji. The moth isn't really is like the only one that doesn't follow the Witch Witchity Grub line as they mature. Instead, being instead of a Witchity Grub which turns into a Cassid Wood Moth, which is what Witchity Grubs turn into, the moth is based on the Phantom Moth, mainly because I wanted a cute moth. Sue me, it's a, I wanted a nice looking moth. Their eyes are patterns are based on how butterflies and other moths can have their faces to scare predators. The moth gets its name from the word phantom and moth, but this is the regional bug. The early mammal is Akarat. Akarat spend most of their time near and swimming in rivers. This is how they get their fur wet, although they never seem to be dry. They are able to shoot water moves and water attacks out of their tail. They all have webbed feet which allow them to swim better than most mammal Pokemon. Aquat are based on Rakali, or a water rat, a rat that spends its time in the water and native to Australia. They aren't the cutest looking things, but hey, I thought it was a bit more of a unique way to include a rodent as a regional, uh, a rodent as a regional Pokemon. Aquat's design has a blue tip, which similar to Rakali have that white tip tail, which I thought was a cool effect and I wanted to make it blue like where the water comes out and it's a little bit different and makes more sense to me rather than it just shooting water out of its mouth. Akrat's name comes from the word aqua and rat. Akrat evolves into Aquadent. Aquadent, now much bigger, have so much water in its fur, it is always wet no matter how sunny or humid it is. They are, their legs and feet are webbed allowing them to swim a lot faster. They use their bubbles on their tails to float to the top like a bobber, and their whiskers are like gills, collecting oxygen, allowing them to breathe underwater. Aquadent are, well, same thing. It's based on the water rat and the Rakali, and having that water tail, I think it's just a cool little idea to see as if they're a fishing bobber, you know, hanging up with the water. Aquadent gets its name from the word aqua and rodent. Next up is one of the biggest things in Pokemon, the Pikachu clone, one that is in every single region. So, with Osmunda's Pikachu clone, meet Denkingu. Denkingu are small, electric-type Pokemon. They spend most of their time bouncing around in the desert. The more they bounce, the higher their charge. They use their ground-type powers to stop themselves from being shocked if its electricity is too strong. Denkingu is great, in my opinion, I've always loved the idea of this tiny little Pikachu clone. As, so here it is, it is really small. It is based on the Australian Hop and Mouse that live in the deserts of, of Australia. I also love the idea of making uh, a Pikachu clone that is a ground type, which you know gets rid of that weakness of ground. Um, but I like it being a part of its design where it spends most of the time in the desert, so of course it would be in a ground type. Denkingu gets its name from Denki, which is electricity in Japanese, and Ingu from Hoppingu, which is hopping in Japanese, as most of the Pikachu clones have their names come from Japanese words. Denkingu evolves into Denkiru. Denkiru generate electricity by jumping around, their tails now turning into a drill which they use to dig holes and homes for themselves. They do love to help other Pokemon, so they drill holes for these other Pokemon. They are fast and able to hop around the desert very quickly. Dinkiru is based on obviously the Hopping Mouse still, but it's also based on the Bilby, 
a mouse-like creature native to Australia. As well as a lot of Australians have a lot of mining industries and just drills, so I wanted to create that with Denkingu and give it more of that, hey, this Pokemon does spend its time in the desert digging holes quite fast, being that energetic hyper Pokemon. Denkiru names come from the word Denki, which again is Japanese for electricity, and Doiru, which is drill in Japanese. But what do you think? Do you like these starting Pokemon that you could see on your Osmuno adventure? Uh, let me know which is your favorite out of this list I've done today. I really like these Pokemon. Love the ideas. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see more. Can't wait to show you guys more of the Osmuno region. Hope you enjoyed. If you have better names for things, please let me know. That's the hardest thing I think about these. Um, but yeah, let me know in the, in the comments. Let me know which is your favorite. And I'll see you all in the next video.